It's terrible. I do it every day, to and from work. It's, yeah, technically you're not supposed to do it, but. You're you know, running for your life? Yes, yeah. <laughs> so you're telling me this entire time, it's no, you can't legally cross here? That's Ever. pretty much. This is now only just about to become legal. Yes. I didn't know that. It's not safe, right? So I would, I would say there are improvements needed, yeah. It's been a mad dash for decades. Pedestrians trying to cross the lake shore on the west side of Spadina as cars try and hang a right and head up the Gardner Expressway. Now for drivers, it's a well-traveled daily grind heading south here along Spadina and up onto the lake shore or the Gardner. Though for pedestrians, it's pretty much been like real life Frogger. Right here, there's been no legal cross for pedestrians for pretty much as long as this intersection has been here. That is until now. You can see right there that traffic light, it's covered with a black bag. We also have some more traffic lights up here. This will soon be a legit pedestrian crossing. The thing is for drivers, they're going to have to stop way up here. There will be a red light for them. If they can't turn right when people are crossing. Now some drivers obviously not very happy with it. Though as you can see, traffic is pretty heavy right now and it's because of this traffic that one expert I spoke with believes that the impacts will be minimal. During rush hour, the two lanes that are connecting uh, the, the, the southbound traffic on Spadina with Gardner, they are already saturated and the traffic has already backed up. So it's not a free flow, it's not an interruption that would be new. The traffic is already impeded there. I, I don't expect a major additional impact on traffic. Cars aren't moving right now in Spadina as it is, so they're just sitting there anyway. Exactly. So I think during the rush hour, the impact will be minimal. You will feel the impact during off-peak period when you see that there's traffic moving and then you see that the on-ramp is empty. One of the tricks to making this work is getting the timing on the signals down. There's also Lakeshore East traffic that will be impacted. The city says they're examining a couple different scenarios. The pedestrian crossing would operate separately from the signals across Lakeshore Boulevard. In this scenario, it would only provide the pedestrian signal when a pedestrian pushes the button to cross the leg of the intersection. Another scenario staff are exploring is to program the signal to provide different wait times during different times of day. There's going to be drivers who are going to say this is going to make their commute, that, that commute south on Spadina on to Gardner even longer. What would you say to them? You know, this is part of our changing city whereby we have to redesign our streets from moving cars quickly to moving people safely. And does that mean it's going to slow down cars? It does. But that's what it takes to improve the safety on our streets and to make a growing neighborhood like downtown Toronto actually a livable place. For years, people haven't been able to cross here, at least legally, every day. Tons of them, dozens of them, as this woman is about to do right now, kind of play real life Frogger and try and make their way across. As you can see, though, there is some lights going in. They're currently covered by black bags. Those will be going in. We're told they're going to open up in about a month. Now, one thing which has been tough on pedestrians is to legally cross here, you actually have to go all the way up Spadina to Bremner, Fort York, and then all the way back down. Earlier today, we did our own little time test to see how that detour was for pedestrians. So this is the spot where pedestrians would finally figure out if they read the sign that they actually can't cross here. That's the only sign people will see. It says pedestrians must cross at the east side. So their only option to walk all the way back up to Bremner. We're going to see how long it takes. Start the clock. So we've got to Bremner and Spadina. We actually can't cross here on the south end of Spadina, so we have to cross over Fort York slash Bremner to the north side before we head east and then back south again. So here we are, the total time just shy of 11 minutes pretty decent little pedestrian detour. This isn't the only new pedestrian crossing happening on Spadina. Today, City News also learned that at Bremner, Fort York, as you saw in my little time lapse video there, they will be putting in a crosswalk on the south side of Bremner, Fort York. Currently, you can't cross there. And another block up at Front Street, they'll also be adding another crosswalk there. Those are set to open up in the months ahead.